Hello guys, thank you very much for joining for us today webinar. Today we have Carlos Guerra, one guest speaker, and he will be talking about his uh, his experience and he will share his knowledge. He is a professional with over 35 years of combined experience in the international public and private sector as executive advisor and vice professor as well as in the diplomatic arena. Aaron. Presently, uh, Guerra serves as Enterprise Florida Manager of International Investment and Logistics, responsible for prom promoting Florida as the, as the primar primary hub for foreign direct investment and business development. So I welcome Carlos to make his speech and motivate you all to keep continuing studying and working hard. So thank you, Carlos, for joining us today. <laughs> no, absolutely. Thank you so very much. And thank you, everybody, for being part of this session. I'm very happy, very proud. And it's a privilege to share this morning, depending where you are, afternoon, etc. But it's a privilege for me to be part of this. And uh, also, I would like to uh, share experience and also learn from you. It's not just me. Uh, also, it's very important for me. Uh, to learn from, from, from all of you. Um, if you wanted, I would like to uh, just talk a little bit about my experience, but also what um, is, uh, has been very interesting for me is the innovation process. In, along my professional career, visiting different countries, uh, collecting information from different uh, professional people, um, meeting with uh, so many people around the world uh, has been extremely interesting. I have learned a lot, uh, even more. <laughs> I have learned uh, more uh, through my experience uh, meeting people from different cultures, uh, professions, activities. And um, because of, uh, there are so many experiences. When you talk with someone, you learn a lot beyond a book or, or a video or a movie or a report, etc., It's very interesting for me uh, getting in touch with people and, and learn. Uh, in my career, I um, have had the possibility to teach in different universities in Chile, United States, and um, also traveling, visiting many countries. Um, one of the most important or most interesting thing that I have uh, capture my attention is innovation. Usually when we talk about innovation, also we like to uh, uh, discuss with you, uh, mostly uh, the idea is uh, technology or um, uh, information technology, software, computers, cellular, et cetera. But, um, what I have learned through my professional career and my life is uh, actually innovation is a process, a process that actually is embedded in every single human beings on this planet. So we can find innovation everywhere. Every person, every single human beings on this planet could be an innovator. And in this context, I would like to share with you what I have collected through my career, through my life. Now I'm living in the United States in, 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 in Miami. And I would like to share with you a few slides. And also in between, we can discuss and have your, your feedback. Unfortunately, I have to uh, summarize everything because uh, there are a lot of, a lot of cases and scenarios, the real cases that are unfortunately I couldn't include it in the in the slide because it's it's, uh, it's it's too much material, too many slides, too many pictures. But uh, I would like to share with you, if you can allow me, um, Rafael, to share. Yeah, I think that you already can share your screen. Excellent. Let me go very quick, and then this is a uh, like a ping pong. Please feel free to. Uh, uh, connect and discuss. I don't know if you can see the slides. Yes, we can, we can. Okay, let me let me start the launch from the beginning. Uh, perfect. 
most of the material actually is uh, has been collected through many years. To be very honest with you, and also is part of a, a presentation and model that I created a long time ago, uh, using the piano as a key component to explain the process of innovation. Not just innovation itself, but the process. How we create, how we are able to create, uh, to uh, use our imagination, our creativity to do something different, to improve processes, etc. So let me start with this very quick. Uh, the first a preliminary approach, what is innovation? And also so many basic questions about this. Um, there's so many questions that I have collected through many years. And the first one, what is innovation? Also, what are the core parameters for innovation? The basic element of innovation. Who is an innovator? Who can be an innovator? Why innovate? It's another key question. Why is necessarily innovate every time or keep innovating every time permanently? What is the purpose of innovation? Why not innovate? Where innovate? When innovate? What are the limits of innovation? What, are the, what is the speed of innovation? What are the trends of innovation? And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know what you think, but I would like to hear from you guys. Uh, what, what do you think about is innovation? The first key question is in yellow color. What do you think is innovation, basically? Any feedback? Is there anyone in the audience that want to speak? Okay, no? I can, I can maybe, as, oh, here we, people are right. So Chris wrote adapting, perhaps when you adapt, you sometimes have to innovate. Oh, yeah. Also the process of creation. Exactly. New, new idea forms. Exactly. Innovation is something that's created that can help humans' life be easier. Exactly. No, basically, basically, it's innovation. When we talk about, let's say, uh, software, we talk about a uh, cellular phone, we talk about information technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a result. This is the outcomes. But the process before. That is very important. That's why innovation is something that is embedded in the human nature. Anybody answering uh, some of these questions, anybody could be an innovator. And this has been uh, very interesting to learn through the years that uh, I have found people in different countries with amazing ideas, amazing ideas. So this is the first click for me. It's not concentrated in just a few people. It's a human, it's a total human um, characteristic is something that is embedded in our nature. Another important thing is, I would like to identify very quick some components of innovation. This is one of the most interesting things for me. Sometimes we live in a scenario that we, the routine kill us. We are living in a routine day, in a daily base. We are, have a very um, routine day. We do the same. We go to the office, we go to the work, we go into the school, the university, and then we continue with the same process. Many people, but at the same time, we have an area, an exploration area, an exploration zone where sometimes many people don't see. And also, this is an, a possibility to explore and get new ideas, new opportunities, new challenges. And basically, it's a zone where innovation can be. That's why it's important to go beyond the daily routine in our uh, personal or professional lives. I have seen this many times, even professional. They, they, they don't see, or for them it's so hard to see beyond certain limits. And that's why innovation also is very challenging. That's why I put here new challenges. When we start thinking in, in, in innovation mode. Now, what we have also here, a very, very simple exercise. This is something that I have discussed many times with the entrepreneurs, with businessmen, with the students, with kids, etc. What is imagination? The, 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 the critical uh, um, uh, conflict and balance and interconnection between imagination and reality. Why? Because the reality could be like this, simple like that. A cat is a very simple to identify. We know what it is. 
But what is imagination? It's our projection. What we can see, what we can do, what is possible to do. But in this visualization, we have a huge problem. I and mean, this problem is the critical gap in between reality and imagination. Everybody, every single person, every single human being on this planet think, has imagination, has a dreams, et cetera. But this yellow area, the critical gap is try to jump from the imagination to the reality or vice versa. How we can do something, how we can make something, how we can uh, realistically do something, not just thinking, not just dreaming, not just having idea. This, this is the bridge that is critical for many people and especially during the innovation process. This is something that I have created a long time ago to explain that everybody in this pyramid at the bottom, you can see we have ideas, we have dreams, we have imagination. Every single person with no exception. The problem is when we go up and we have to work, go through the critical zone. The critical zone is do everything, make things happen, put everything, try to test trial and error, commitment, willingness, determination in action. This is the most critical part. And the final part is the execution, the result, the outcome. But everybody, everybody, every single person with no exception as is in the bottom, at the bottom of the pyramid with ideas, dreams, et cetera, et cetera, with projects. But the problem is go through the execution process. And this is something that is very interesting. That's why many projects, many plans fail because we don't know. We don't know what to do. We don't know what is the next step because of fear, because of lack of willingness, whatever is the reason. But that's why few people uh, continue and go through this critical zone and get the final result. It's not easy, but that's why there are so many steps that we can follow and uh, some tips that we can uh, keep in mind in order to continue with the process. It's not easy because it's permanent, it's a permanent challenge. Another thing, some opinions that are very interesting for me, for instance, uh, Lavoisier, a French chemical uh, scientific, he says something very smart. Nothing is lost, nothing is created, everything is transformed, but at the same time, improve. And this is happening permanently in every single innovation process. I'm talking about a uh, people, a person from the 18th century. So nothing is new in terms of ideas, in terms of process. So this is one of the most interesting uh, quotes that I have found related to innovation. Also, Leonardo da Vinci, very simple. Everything is connects with everything. So when we think in from a uh, systemic perspective and we connect different dots and we put all the pieces together in this big puzzle, the analysis, the innovation process could be easier for us. So it's better to understand the, the, huge, the, the whole picture as well, in addition to uh, pay attention to the details. Another interesting thing, which is absolutely amazing, the truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. This is one of the most important challenges because sometimes we are trying, when you are trying to innovate, you don't know what is gonna happen. And when everything happens, when you get the result, the final step, the execution step, everything uh, looks easy. But the previous process, when you don't know what is gonna happen, is the most challenging step in this uh, chain. Another interesting thing is the truth sign of intelligence is not knowledge per se, but according to Einstein, then a very interesting point is the imagination. Sometimes we don't pay attention to the imagination. The problem is with the imagination is we don't, when we don't put a, a, in the right track the imagination. We can spend the rest of our life imagining, thinking, having ideas, but the thing is how we can down to earth the imagination and make things happen. 
Another important thing, this is IBM uh, uh, source, which is very interesting because it was a global survey from IBM and the source, very simple. Most of the executive CEO mentioned that the creativity is the most desirable quality in a CEO, which is very interesting. Another thing is Henry Ford. Um, this is typical in our human nature. We're complaining, 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 complaining. But this also is a problem if we want to be a real innovator. We have to make things happen. Instead of complaining, we have to resolve the problem. We have to analyze. We have to put everything in perspective, okay, and fix the problem. And this is a shortcut. But the most uh, 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 common uh, uh, scenario that I have seen through my professional life, which is part of human nature, is complaining instead of fix the problem. This is a quality that we have to improve in our personality. Another thing is we cannot solve our problem with the same thinking that we use when we create them. So permanently, the innovation process is something that is, is part of our um, emotional and rational uh, components. This is very interesting, very interesting, because as you know, Bernard Shaw mentioned something that are extremely interesting. Both optimism and pessimism contribute to the society. And why? Because you will see here that something that was totally, totally a pessimist uh, thought at the end creates something totally different. Mr. Lord Kelvin said that a heavier than air flying machine are impossible. We're talking about Lord Kelvin. You remember the Fahrenheit degree? Well, Kelvin degree is a very uh, um, important scientific in, 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 in England. But think about that. We're talking about a, a, a person that uh, mentioned this, but at the same time, it's happened totally the opposite. We created the airplane. So this quote was totally destroyed with the reality of the design creation of a fly machine, the airplane. So what we have also, the bottom line of this is not just about ideas, keeping thinking, dreaming. It's about making ideas happen. This is the most difficult part in any innovation process. Now, putting some pieces together, I would like to mention basic principle. There are a lot of principles. I just uh, pick a few of them and some takeaways of this. First of all, the innovation is embedded in human nature and it's a universal component. Everybody could be an innovator. Secondly, innovation is a step-by-step -step process. It's not an space race. So we have to think that sometimes we have to face the scenario of trial and error. Not necessarily have it, everything happens at the first time. We have to try, 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 try. And many keep, people give up in this step, okay? Another thing is innovation before being a collective and disrupted uh, um, is essentially an individual process. So every single person have the capability to think, project individually. Everybody can have an idea, very good idea. Then if everything goes correctly, it goes right, of course, it could be a, an amazing uh, product, an amazing uh, process, uh, et cetera. So, but everything starts at individual level. Another important thing, in many cases, people are confused because have you seen in, in bookstore um, books about the 10 secrets to be success, the 10 secrets to be happy? It doesn't exist. There is no secret, but lack of information. That's why it's very important to select the right information, the right piece of information when you have to create something. Another important thing is creativity is a key component of innovation. It has no limit. Creativity is key component for innovation. Another important thing is never, when you, you rationalize the process, never get, don't panic because you have to understand that not necessarily you have to expect the result immediately. Always you have to face a process with a combination of risk, trial, and error, risk, trial, and error. So 
this is also part of the mentality if you want to be uh, an innovator or think in terms of improved processes. Another interesting thing is innovation is a process that uh, also give the opportunity to create a good team environment. This is very important. When, when you have to have the opportunity to work with groups, let me tell you, um, every single person has different talents and skills. So a good leader try to take advantage of these uh, uh, different talents in, in a group. So it's a good opportunity to create a very good team and very good team environment through the innovation process, because you have to share experience, you have to share ideas, uh, feedbacks, et cetera. So that's another important point for me when we talk about innovation. What to do in general, what I honestly recommend, what I have seen through my life, my professional career is, first of all, explore your possibilities, which is, and then decide what to do. We have a diverted thinking and converted thinking. Sometimes we just explore, explore, think what to do. But then very important, you have to decide what to do. And this is the bridge that you have to connect always when you are thinking in terms of innovation or create something or improve something. Now, another important point that is part of a full class is Usually, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but you can apply this to your personal life. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? What are your threats? Every single company, small companies, large companies, use this uh, model to identify key components to improve the company, to improve the process, to improve the products, et cetera, et cetera, to improve the, com the com competitiveness, et cetera. So, this is interesting because it's realistic. What are your strengths, your strongest points? What are your weaknesses? What are the points that you have to improve? This has happened to at company level, business level, and personal level. That's why it's important because at the end of the day, if we think, what is a company? What is the business? People, it's a concept. A business is a concept, but who make this possible are people working together under same roof and certain kind of uh, uh, regulation um, and uh, collective effort. Another important point, get advice. Never do something just uh, uh, improvising because also you have to protect your ideas and also uh, get advice from professional people from the right person or the right organization. In my case, many companies, many international foreign investors uh, um, have meeting with us and we provide advice, serious advice, professional advice for foreign companies trying to do business or invest in foreign. So always it's important a professional advice, a professional support when you are creating something. Another important point, very quick, there are thousands, thousands of examples, but just pick a few, just, just as an example. For instance, if you try to identify some of these people, all of them are innovators. Maybe you don't recognize, maybe, I don't know if you recognize one of them, two of them, none of them, but at the end, different countries, different historical period, all of them in some way thought, went through the process, the execution process, all of them at the end of the day are innovators. For instance, here at the bottom, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, innovators in different fields, not just technological fields. For example, do you know what it is? I, actually, I saw a picture from, of Capoeira, and so, yes, so, so, so. I, I, I remove it because you have a lot of capoeira. It's one of the examples that I have in my list. But every, anybody recognize this? It's you, Oregon. I, I'm sorry? Isn't that Oregon? Oregon, exactly. One can think, what is the connection between origami, a very old, very old tradition 
with innovation. Today, how we can connect thousands of years through this, through origami, which is folding paper. I used to play with the little chips at the bottom when it was a little boy. But what is the connection between creativity, visualization, application? Simple. NASA is using origami for uh, investigations and uh, space problems. Check this. This is origami. This is the principle of origami applied in a, a space project. This is another example. Someone else take, took the idea and continue fabricating a kayak based on the idea of folding paper, how, how we can fold a kayak. And he did it. So the creativity process is endless, has no limit. Another example, do you recognize this lady? Well, if we remember the pyramid, at this point, she was at the bottom of the pyramid, thinking, dreaming, knocking so many doors, receiving so many no, 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 your, your project's not viable. It's, no, do, 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 your project's not good. I don't see any projection for your project. Well, this lady is nothing more, nothing less than the J.K. Rowling, her reporter. She started from scratch. Nobody believed in her idea at the beginning. But the, she went through the process. The bottom line is she made it. That's the most difficult part. What we have hit a simple box. You think, what is the correlation between a simple box, the concept, the idea of box that changed the international trade? Simple. If you see this, this gentleman, Malcolm McLean, in 1956, he created and patented the modern shipping container. And the shipping container changed the way of the import export process, which is at the end international trade. You have to remember that more or less in 90, 90% 90 of the international trade is by ocean. That's why it's so important the shipping container because also allowed to standardize in a box the international trade. Now the 40 foot container, 20 foot container, open top flat rack container is part of this principle, the box. Now, what we have here is in Colombia, someone created a special active container to preserve the uh, vegetables and improve the, the quality in over 40%. This is something that we're thinking, how we can improve uh, the um, perishable products with a new active container to improve the quality of the product. So as you can see, ideas are all over. And one of the key points, believe it or not, for our innovation is observation, the curiosity. Believe it or not, this is critical. This is a very interesting quote from Bernard Shaw. You think, what is the correlation with innovation and business? We don't stop playing because we, get, we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. What happened with this is this. One guy, one guy got the idea. House tree for frustrated adults. This is a business here in Miami in many, in many cities. Why not create houses, tree houses, thinking or taking the idea from a basic principle um, um, idea when you are a, a child, when you're a, a little boy, a little girl. We dream with a house on a tree. Well, this guy created an industry based on this idea. Another thing is what Lego can affect the motivation, the education, the imagination of uh, children. This case, I don't know if you're aware of this case, 
this case is a lawyer, used to be a corporate lawyer in New York. He left the job, he quit, and he was fully dedicated now in Lagos. He's an artist. They have um, exhibition all over the world. Just do it Lego. But if I tell you, hey, why you don't try to do this with Lego? Most probably you will take Carlo. <laughs> Are you crazy? This doesn't make any sense. Because usually we think in something secure. This is jumping to the pool. Why? The, this uh, Nathan Sawaya, she was playing, he was playing Lego since he was a little boy. So the idea of the Lego remained in his mind. Now, as an adult, he said, why not? Why not? Because also he received a lot of feedback. Now, it's a business. But think about how you can take different avenues in terms of when you have to create something. I don't know if you heard about Mother Nature University, but Mother Nature University is, for example, like this. This is a typical uh, uh, collection, uh, a folk collection in desert areas in Chile, in Canary Islands, in, in, in Spain, in, in Peru. But the original idea, the screen, if you see here, the screen, collect the water, the fog, and then this container, collect the water. But the principle, the idea is based in this. Another idea is, I don't know what we can learn from animals. Anybody can tell me what you can think, how a frog, a um, uh, lizard, a uh, cockatoo can, can teach us, how, what we can learn from them. Anybody? How an animal, what kind of lesson we can learn from them, from those pictures? What do you think? Any, any, any correlation with innovation? Any idea, any connection with innovation? Yeah, adaptation? I'm, I'm sorry? Adaptation? Good, it's a good point. Anybody else? Guys, please jump into the pool. Oh, someone raised their hand. Wait a minute, just let me get the... So let me can, tell yeah. So can you are able to talk? Feel free to um, open your mind. Okay, thank you. Um, I think the animals were able to change their colors. They became so colorful to be able to survive to be able to withstand the predators and other animals which may want to eat them. It is an adaptive feature of these animals. Wow. Thank you. That's a very important point. But let me, let me tell you something, guys. None of these are animals. These are human bodies painted. Do you see the chameleon? Is one body in both two bodies in opposite sides painted. The parrot, the birds, is one person in a very exotic position. The frogs are four people, one at the middle, two legs. At the front, two more legs are. This is a pure imagination guy, but at the same time, it's a business. This is Johannes Trotter, an Italian artist. He created. He created animal creation. When you see these pictures, you, didn't, you don't see the animals. You don't see the animals painted in the body, but are not animal, animals, real animals. This is truly imagination. So this guy is amazing in terms of use his creativity doing what he like it and transform this passion into a business. So think about that. It's, it's not just think to make money, it's how we can do something 
that we truly believe and we can have passion for that. Another important point, this is in Argentina, 500 uh, cows, the poo of the cows is transformed into energy. That's why I mentioned at the beginning, Lavoisier, the French scientific, nothing is lost, nothing is created, everything is transformed. This is a very good example. The, the, the poo is transformed into energy, biogas. So when we think how we can create something, how we can transform something, how we can improve something, this is part of the innovation process. Another important thing, William Kamkawa, an amazing guy from Malawi in Africa, he created a wine turbine from scratch, from nothing, and he get water in his country. Oh, this book became a, a, a film, right? Exactly. Also, it's a movie with the same name, The Boy Who Armed the Wind. This is not just, you know, think or dream. He was fully decided to get fresh water with the resources available at that time in a specific moment. And he made it. That's the beauty of this process. Not just think, every, remember guys, the bottom of the pyramid, every single person, nobody, no, no, no matter the profession, where they live, nothing. Every single human being can dream. The, the thing is how we can make it. That's the bottom line for me. Now, what we have here, an effective solution. This guy is a, a, a farmer in UK and all the time he got the problem that uh, how to protect the ships. This is a solution. Maybe nothing brilliant, but think about this guy living in, in the middle of the country with ships trying to protect them. How you can, how you can uh, easily identify them. He put in a spray, orange spray. He fixed the problem. So this is imagination, but at the same time, it was a low cost solution, an effective solution. This is part of the imagination, but here we are talking about an application, how we can solve a simple problem. What we have is here, do you know to whom belong this? The mission is to involve the imagination. You think how we can put together imagination into a real project, a down to earth project. What do you think belong this mission statement? to whom belong this mission statement. Guess what? Anybody? I, I have no idea. Circle to slave. If you know, it all began in 1984 on the street. So 20 street performers, the result, you remember the pyramid? The result, they went through the process, execution, commitment, effort, trying and error, lack of financing, et cetera, and they made it. So when you think about imagination, the question is what we can do with this? So, this is one of the examples that is truly amazing how a simple, a simple idea evolved and the execution, the final result, the outcome is a business model like a Circo du Soleil. Yeah. Another example, I, I, I don't have, know. Sorry. Yep. Oh, I, I have attended oh. twice Circo du Soleil and that was awesome. It's mind blowing how they can do it. The show, I, it's unbelievable what they can do. It's crazy. It's not, it's amazing. I was talking in one of the performing years in, in Orlando, uh, in Florida, 
I was talking because I like this talk with the people, the real people. After the the presentation, we talked with two um, um, artists, amazing. They were talking about the life. All of them told us hey, we are so happy because we are doing what we like it. So it's it's very interesting when you talk with people that are involved in this. Maybe there are so many experiences, but my experience talking with them was amazing. It was an opportunity for for them. Now. Think about this. What do you think it is? A unique invention for quiet and troubled waters. This is a huge, guys, huge innovation. Here we can, we can, we can see the creativity, how to face the environment, the reality at the time. Here you can see and a specific, a real, real product, a real solution. Do you know what it is? Can you think about what it is? Because remember what I mentioned at the beginning is innovation, creativity is all over, everywhere. It's timeless, it's borderless, there is no limits. It's a human component. Based on that, can you identify what it is? Any clue, any idea, any, you smell something? Kevin uh, said the boat with the empty middle. What does it mean? Yeah. The Vikings. Why? If you see the shapes, this guy thought in everything. Guess what? This is one of the most amazing characteristics. You see a modern yacht, more expensive, more sophisticated, with much more technology, and this very simple boat. Why? Because the shape, the form, okay, allow quick response in both directions. With this one, you cannot do the same. So this was one of the most amazing innovation for Viking to navigate the oceans and also based on some historical records, Vikings came here before to Christopher Columbus. So this was something extremely creative and effective. Think about that. That's why I told you creativity, observation, curiosity is embedded in human nature. Now, as a final words, there are so many examples thousand of example, but I would like to mention something very simple, guys. Don't let your dreams and projects fail. Get advice, work in a team, project, analyze, get the right information. And also, if you want to contact me, I'll be more than happy to help you. And uh, also, in, in the future, I would like to uh, get in touch with Rafael and want to thank you again for the invitation. And um, also now I would like to, please, um, I would like to, uh, I would like to talk with all of you. You have any experience, any feedback, any case, any example, any idea, I would like to hear from you as well. This was a very short <laughs> um, uh, presentation, but the idea is bottom line that innovation is a process that is embedded in human nature. Thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Please type in the chat or raise your hand. We can open your mic as well. The senior coaches, coaches, do you guys have any questions? Okay, Brandon raised their hand. Wait a minute. Uh, hey, Brenda, you can talk. You can open your mic. Sure. 
Um, is it like um, Thomas Jeffrey Thomas Alva Edison Edison like the one with the one that created the light bulb? Uh, he dreamt about it and he tried I think one hundred times before he was able to find who was able to create that light bulb. Oh yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Yeah, sometimes we just see the result, but uh, what you mentioned is very interesting. Uh, we try sometimes many, 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 many times, but the secret here is uh, the willingness and not to give up. So what you mentioned is totally right. Absolutely right. Kevin raised his hand too. Wait a minute. Kevin, you are allowed to talk. Uh, okay, thank you. I, um, hello, I have a question. Uh, how do you keep the fire burning when we want to try to innovate something, but like the surrounding doesn't support us? Like the society doesn't, doesn't like what, what we want to innovate is not supported by the community. How do we keep that fire burning? The, in the interest of research and trial and error. I can hear you very well because of the communication, but if I, if I heard correctly, is how you can keep uh, innovating and keep the information and protect uh, you. How, how do you keep the fire burning when like the, the surroundings, like your family, your community, your group, the society does not support what you're trying to do, what you're trying to innovate? Yeah, well, this is a very interesting point, very interesting question. And I think you, you can also can have the answer. Uh, one of the most important thing that I also talk about this is that uh, Maria Montessori mentioned one, once a uh, time ago uh, is motivation, is education from the very beginning. Because when you're a child, you're a little boy, little girl, um, the first step in education is motivation and how to keep motivating through your life. Because in addition to the technical knowledge, we have to keep in mind how important is the motivation and the support. First of all, in my case, very honestly, I'm a very motivated person and I'm trying not to give up especially when you mentioned, it's very interesting, when you see or you feel that everything or everybody's against you. The difficult part here is what I said, try to get the right advice, the right support, the right information. Uh, you can also contact or people in this situation, you can contact uh, uh, organizations uh, like uh, this, uh, program that Rafael invited me to speak, all the components that can allow you to keep your dream and your project alive, it's, uh, it's important to, to consider. Because of uh, at the end of the day, yes or yes, in one way or another, you will receive no or yes. But uh, you have to filter the information. You have to filter when you are rejected. You have to filter also and analyze if the no or the rejection means that is something wrong, or you have to redirect your projects. So there are so many little moving pieces all together when you face this kind of situation. Also, what I recommend is a comparative analysis, similar ideas how similar ideas uh, succeed. Also, there is something very personal, very honestly, very, very personal, is your own motivation, your own personality. What is your visualization? What I mentioned at the beginning, the difference between reality and imagination. Okay, how we can went through this. So in this context, what we, what we have to do is um, use all the emotional, rational and experience and skill tools that we have available. Very important. So keep in mind this willingness, uh, commitment, trial and error, don't give up are permanent, permanent component that are 
in in the, uh, in any innovation process. Not just the the the, the, the process of doing something is the emotional, uh, rational, uh, psychological impact of this because the the environment affects yes or yes affect. But this is the ability that you also personally you have to have in order to uh, succeed. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kai, for your question. Oh, some can raise his hand again. Just feel free to talk, so can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I my question is of two parts. First of all, I wanted to ask because human beings are restricted by the number of hours we have, by the number of years we have to spend surviving our life. How do we balance our, because we're into a lot of things, because I'm a student and I've really found it hard combining my academic work with my ex culture participation. It has really been hard for me. So how do we balance everything in our lives and still face the and still innovate and still have the opportunity to make the change we want to make. Thank you. That's an interesting point. Very interesting point. Uh, oh, this is uh, very honestly it's the same question for me. I wonder exactly the same because I work, I teach at the university. I also have different activities. So how to keep in balance everything? First of all, in part, I answered this question before, but I, your point is very interesting. You have to keep in mind what are your priorities, first of all. Secondly, what your environment, I mean environment, uh, the professional environment, where do you live, uh, the, the, the institutional environment offer you to um, uh, continue with your project. Also, a priority, you have to keep uh, writing down what are your priorities. So what is most important and most relevant for you personally and professionally? And also, this is a tricky, tricky because of uh, sometimes the priority not necessarily is what you work, is what you like it. Sometimes what you like it is something that you are planning to, you, you wish to do, but you can because you need you know, a budget to, to, to live every day, to pay your, your, your expenses, et cetera. So one thing is how we can balance everything is uh, first of all, what are your priority? What, um, uh, how much time you would like to uh, invest in your project? Uh, also uh, evaluate if you can work uh, together with other people, with, uh, I don't know, club or organization or group. So this facilitate the idea and also facilitate that you are not alone. So, and also you can get certain emotional, physical support for your project. And also if you have a responsibility with your family, of course, you have to put in the list what is the priority and what are the most important components in your life. Now, if you see that you have on your hands an amazing possibility, an amazing project, um, this is something that you have to analyze how much time you will put, you will invest on this. Because again, depend where you live, or what is the institutional support. For instance, here in, in, in Florida, where I live in the United States, there are so many organizations, so many entities that can help you, uh, any person with an idea. So you feel more comfortable because you know the system assists you with your idea. If you are a small business or startups, there are so many organizations that can help you, your business plan, with your priorities, with, uh, to create your, your, your project, um, to organize your business, to, to identify your business model. So, this means at the end support. So that's why your priority, you have to put it um, in context with your reality and your strength. That's why I mentioned the SWOT uh, model analysis. What are your strengths? 
what are your weaknesses, what are your opportunities, what are your threats. And then you put in, in order what are your priorities and what would you like to do. But very interesting point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Son Ken. I will do just a weekly update so you, we can end the meeting, okay? So the academic students are supposed to work on their, to finish their section three of their report, okay? You need to submit uh, the section three by tomorrow. Just make sure to do it. And next week, you're going to start to work on your complete drafts. So, okay, so make sure to contact your peers and start to work on your complete draft as well. And uh, next weekend, we will have a virtual tour and it's going to be uh, from Kenya. Okay, so I invite you all to join us for next weekend uh, virtual tour as well. So uh, thank you, Carlos, for your, your speech. I think that everyone enjoyed. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your time and for the question. Thank you very much. Uh, if you, uh, any students want to ask Carlos any questions, please send a message to Academy and I can uh, pass it on to him, okay? Thank you guys, see you next weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Carlos, bye-bye.